earlier in the season, we talked about refurbishing our straw bell garden and how to repurpose that and use it for another year. Now, originally we had built this straw bell garden because we wanted to have better drainage and for a temporary situation, it's a great way to create a raised bed without any construction and a pretty cheap um, input on it. So now we're looking at the residue that's left after a year of gardening in those straw bells. Now we showed you some ways to utilize that straw throughout your garden, but again, there's still a lot of organic matter to use. So we're gonna show you how to utilize that as another form of a raised bed. The first thing that we're gonna wanna do is kind of clean this out. We've got some weeds in here, and we've got a lot of other material that we're just gonna go ahead and clean some of this stuff out um, by raking it up a little bit. If you find any, um, there's a couple of like leftover uh, baling twine and stuff from the hay bales. You want to go ahead and make sure to remove any of that. Anything that looks like old plant debris, you're going to want to remove that and add that to your compost. Now, of course, we're going to have a lot of organic matter and straw that stays in there, and that's fine. A lot of leaf debris and stuff, but just anything that's a solid older plant, let's go ahead and try to remove any of that. So we're just kind of raking this to make sure we're getting all of the trash debris and the old plant material out. Again, you can still see we've got a lot of straw and leaf litter mixed in. And what I wanted to show you is the bottom of what some of those straw bells look like. You can see how it's decomposed. It's got a lot of um, straw-like material that you can almost see that was straw, but it is so full of moisture. Um, and this isn't getting irrigated, it hasn't rained in quite a while. And so this organic matter, if you incorporate it into your soil, it's gonna improve that existing soil that you have in your garden bed. And really, it almost acts like sponges that it holds that water and the nutrients. And so that's what's great about this, is you're improving your garden soil after a year of using a raised garden. So as we tore apart our straw bells, it kind of just went all over. And what I'm doing is just really not making a raised bed just yet, but just pulling it up into a pile so that I can expose any weeds that have started germinating. And we're gonna go ahead and clean this bed of all the weeds so that we're ready to develop our mounded garden to plant in here. Now that we've got the weeds cleaned out and any of the debris that we don't want in this, again, we just have straw and leaf litter and a, that potting soil that was originally part of the straw bell garden. And we want to turn that in now to the original existing soil bed that was underneath this. So just to incorporate it a little bit more, we're just going to start digging this and kind of turning it over and working in that organic matter. So after you've kind of dug it up and incorporated some of your soil, and I know we all have different types of soil and it might be difficult, you might use a tiller if you're having difficulties actually turning the soil with a shovel, that'll be just fine. Um, and in fact, if, if you wanted to and you didn't even want to incorporate your soil, you probably could have just mounded that organic matter and planted it in, uh, directly. We probably had about six to eight inches of organic matter, which would have been fine for enough rooting zone. But keep in mind, you're gonna to have to water that more frequently. With this soil incorporated, we're actually improving our existing soil, and we are also going to allow for better drainage. You can see after we've incorporated, we've got quite a volume here. And so the next thing we're gonna do is break up any chunks and then mound that up so that we have that raised bed. So again, we've got our carbon or our straw material mixed in with our soil. And anytime you incorporate a lot of carbon material, you wanna make sure that you're fertilizing with a nitrogen. Now, based off of our soil test, we know that we're pretty well suited for phosphorus and potassium and that we only need to add nitrogen. But the nitrogen that is available is going to get tied up pretty quickly with that carbon in order to continue that decomposition process. So that's why we're adding a little bit more. And we're just gonna sprinkle that in on top here on our planting surface so that as we plant, it actually gets incorporated even more into that soil profile. 
For this particular bed, we've decided to go ahead and plant our potatoes. Now, potatoes need to be planted mid-March, so you're running out of time if you haven't got them in the ground. So what we have here is Yukon Gold. You can see it's kind of got a yellow skin to it. And of course, these have been cut and we've allowed them to callus over, so they're not gonna be moist going into that soil profile. And then we also have a, a Pontiac Red that has more of a red skin color to it. So again, we've got our growing eyes there. They're ready to get in the ground. And so we're just gonna lay these out and then plant them. So we've got our bed prep and we've got our fertilizer out and our seed potatoes laid out. And so now we just have to get them in the ground. So we're just gonna go behind and dig down a couple of inches with our hand trowel and put those in the ground and then cover them over. So that incorporates that nitrogen fertilizer as we're going. Um, and I have to say, once you've done all this bed prep in order to make this mounded bed, you're going to have the easiest time planting these seed potatoes because all the hard work is done at this point. And your potatoes are gonna thrive in this environment. They're gonna love that loose mix of organic matter that provides plenty of drainage and is easier for those roots to grow. We hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.